Now, continuing on with the test procedure, we're going to take the external leads and we're going to connect them directly onto the battery. As you can see on our heavy duty battery load tester, we have available 12.6263 volts available in that battery. That's slightly below the specified amount for a full service charge on this battery. This battery has been on charge for about 30 minutes and it will be load tested to determine its internal capacity for service charge. The next thing I want to do is take our internal leads which we now have to select on the battery or pardon me on the load tester which should be at zero so now we can take these leads and connect them directly onto the battery and what we're going to do is determine how much voltage is actually on the battery surface based on the condition of the battery as it was pulled out of the vehicle. So if we connect the positive lead to the positive side of the battery and then use the ground lead, we're going to run this directly between the two terminals on the top of the battery to determine what's called the parasitic load. The parasitic load is a very, sm very, very small uh, amperage load that's on the battery but more so it takes away from the service charge voltage of the battery based on how much is being lost through dirt, gassing, contamination on the surface of the battery. So if we connect this just onto the plastic case of the battery we can see here that on our heavy duty battery load tester we are losing 2.27 volts on the plastic case. The plastic case is usually an insulator, but because of the contaminations on the surface, that's causing a drop in actual service voltage. If you watch and note on the battery, I'm going to move the test lead from the positive side, moving the negative test lead across to the negative connection on the battery. And as you can see on the tester, at one particular point, we're losing 10.53 volts. As we continue across, it's climbing 10.44, 45, and there we've dropped down to 390 volts. Continuing across, and it changes dramatically as we move across until we get back to the negative connection and right around the negative connection, it's dropping to 10.53 volts. Now reconnecting it to the negative terminal, it puts us back to the applicable service voltage that is in this battery prior to doing a load test. Okay, next test we're going to do is we have our leads connected directly to the battery. The cold cranking amp rating on this battery is 650 CCA. To load test the battery, we have to load it down to half of the cold cranking amperage rating, which would be 325 amps for a 15 second duration test. That'll determine the capacity of the battery for holding the amperage and for determining how much voltage is still available after we've loaded it down to that rating. We're now going to connect the amp clamp directly to the battery. And one important aspect is is looking at the heavy duty load tester again is making sure that our amp clamp is not reading anything prior to doing our load test. So I'm just going to bring this down to zero using the keypad and getting it to a stable zero reading. You can see our applicable voltage here is 12.54 volts, slightly below the actual voltage available for this battery but this battery is in bad service condition at this particular point. So I'm going to load this down now. I'm going to try and stabilize the load rating on this around 325. It's okay if we go slightly out of range, above the range, but not below the range because we have to crank it to a minimum amperage rating. So we'll load this down and try and get it around 325. And you can see that already our timer has started for the load that we started putting on it. 
I got it somewhere around 320 to 330 amps. And the audible tone now here is indicating that the battery test is done. The available voltage I have is 12.62. Release the load, the carbon pile load that's on it. And then note the recovery voltage on the battery. And this should continue to climb through the chemical reaction that's occurring in the battery right now, bringing us back to around that 12 and a half volt range that we originally started at. If we monitor this for long enough, it would probably recoup. And that's the important part, is making sure that the battery can recoup the lost voltage that's being used during initial cranking or initial loading that's put on it in application with the vehicle.